A typhoon flypast has taken place over Loch Ness to mark the spot where a Wellington bomber ditched nearly 80 years ago. One crew member was killed in the incident. Now a campaign's underway to ensure the aircraft's story is never forgotten. Here's Nicola McCallie. When the engine cut out, I realised that there was no possibility of getting back to base. Uh, the aircraft was losing height. Memories of how a giant of military aviation met a watery end on New Year's Eve 1939. Wellington bomber pilot David Marwood Elton was forced to ditch his aircraft on Loch Ness almost eight decades ago after a training exercise ended in tragedy. One crewman, Sergeant John Fensom, died after bailing out. We were flying at 8,000 feet and the weather conditions were snow squalls. As luck would have it, spotted Loch Ness through a break in the clouds. The wreckage lay undisturbed for nearly 50 years before it was discovered by chance by American Nessie hunters in 1976, and it was raised to the surface a decade later. Adrian Shine helped survey the spot at the time. Today he returned with a marker. You could see the engines, you could see the gun turrets. Uh, as well as the, the damage that had happened to it. And so it, it, was, it was quite fascinating. And it's for, nearly 40 years ago for me. A commemoration campaign's underway to mark 80 years since the Wellington ditched. Today, an airborne tribute came in the form of a typhoon flypath from the base the World War II bomber belonged to, RAF Flossie Mouse. A lay-by looks over the spot, its plaque tended by former headmaster Ian Benzie, whose pupils were captivated by the story. They were given the responsibility of finding out from the actual people, the pilot, his wife, the uh, uh, Robin Holmes and the, the uh, Loch Ness Wellington Association. The Wellington bomber, nicknamed R for Robert, now resides in the Brooklands Museum in Surrey and a film's being made to recount the tale of when this monster landed in Loch Ness. If it hadn't been for interest in, in Nessie and people doing a Nessie hunt, um, it would, would have probably never been found. Like many aircraft that crashed during the war uh, have long, long since forgotten, this one lives on. Nearly 80 years after she ditched here on a dark winter's night, the story of the Wellington bomber continues to live on. And those involved in this project say they're determined that this legend of Loch Ness will be marked for many years to come. Nicola McCallie, STV News.